Welcome back. Today we are going to be making something, uh, something actually real. Unlike what we did last time when we just created a, a pizza box rock thing. Today we're going to be making something that, you know, you might actually make in-game for realsies. Or as a mod for realsies. And what would that be? Glad you asked. A simple bar stool. So we're going to have four legs, such as these, and uh, we'll have some support brace things so that the legs don't just twist and fall, and then a seat up on top, of course. Uh, we are going to start trying to decide if I want the legs to be really thin like this. Mm, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep them bigger. Okay, so we have one leg. Now, here's a little something I like to do. We're going to have a top on this. You know, the, the seat part. So we're going to pull this down 1 16th. Then I'm going to go ahead and delete that face right away because there'll be a top atop it that you'll never be able to see. And then there'll be four of these that are all identical. So it makes sense to go ahead and do the UV unwrap or at least mark the seams for the UV unwrap on this leg before we go ahead and copy it because that just saves us time later on. So we're just going to go ahead and duplicate that. Select both of those, duplicate them. I'm going to rotate these 180 degrees. Um, and what I like to do is have, yeah, now this is, this is completely Oh wait, this one's wrong too. This is completely arbitrary. It doesn't really matter too much, big scheme. Um, but I like to put my seams on the inside. So here, all of these red lines are where these will be sliced in order to squish them flat so we can do the texture. Uh, and I like to put those in the least notice noticeable position. So in the inside like this, is the least noticeable because when you look at it you'll be seeing the outside faces you'll see these faces you'll see these faces and there's not that big of a window where you can actually see where the inner faces intersect and once you put a top on there there's even fewer so I like to do that you don't necessarily have to you can put your seams wherever you want obviously I just like to put them there because it's it's easier for me I have a feeling that was not what we wanted I am in edge select, not face. Okay, so this is going to be the... I don't know what this would technically be called. The support structure. Uh, and I'm going to make it two by one. Um, we'll put one about here. It doesn't really matter where it goes. And right to there. Now I'm making this thinner than the legs are. And you know, I think I'm going to put it to the inside. Now, before I do this, though, we're going to have eight of these. Because there'll be a lower round and an upper round. I'm going to delete the face off of both ends because we'll never see those. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and I'll mark the seam on the bottom here. So this will be sliced there and it'll just become a flat sheet. Now, that is going to become an issue when we do the upper round, but that's okay. We'll deal with that later. So again, just going to duplicate, rotate, so that way our cuts are both on the bottom. I'll go ahead and select both of these. Duplicate, rotate 90 degrees. And I'm going to... Do I want to? I'm going to put those up. Yeah, I think, I think that works. Um, you could obviously put them both or all four of them, whatever, at the same height, instead of doing the stagger there. Uh, completely, completely does not matter. Okay, now an easy way to actually do this, I'm just going to select all of that. Uh, control plus increases selection, control numpad, wow, control numpad plus increases, control numpad minus decreases selection, if you're wondering why I'm doing that. I'm going to duplicate those, put them to the top, and then from the side view here, I will select these, and that should actually be everything selected because there's not an end face. I'm just going to pull those up. So now if we go to solid view, these supports are going to be underneath the seat holding the legs together. 
So I can actually delete all of these top faces because we'll never see them and therefore they are simply wasted geometry. And I'm going to go ahead now and select my my UV seams on this upper round of them and I'm just going to uh, remove those by pulling up the menu with W and then clear seams because these being three faces will already fold flat without any extra work. Last thing we need to do modeling wise is create the actual chair portion that we sit on because uh, it would be pretty uncomfortable right now. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger than the the frame is. This is kind of modeled off of a wooden bar stool that I actually built and <laughs> I'm sitting on at this very moment. Uh, the only difference being is that mine, the leg braces at the bottom there, all stagger upwards. I think it's actually probably not quite to scale either, but that's fine. It's uh, what is it anyways? Two by four construction with two by twos for the legs. So yeah, it's not quite really to scale, but you know what? Who's keeping track? Now for this seat part, we do need to do some marking for the seams. Because everything here is 90 degree angles, this does work really well. Um, we'll cover some stuff in a future episode where we deal with angles. I know some people are gonna be like, angles? But, but this is a cubic voxel game. You can't use angles. Well, I'm here to tell you, you actually can, and it does work. You just need to be aware of a few caveats and uh, plan accordingly. Okay, so we have the, the stool here. We have the UV layout of the stool. These are gonna be, let me change to, uh, what is this called, island select, I think? Yeah, so with this mode selected, I am, when I right click on something, I'm selecting the whole island here. So this is going to be an upper piece because there's only three. These two are both going to be lower pieces because there are four. This one's an upper. This one's an upper. This one's an upper. These two are lowers. Let's put those over there just to kind of keep things neat. I know it's super messy. Nothing is lined up to pixels or anything right now, but that's fine. We are going to go ahead and do constraint to image bounds. We are going to round to pixels, set to corner, image open. All right, so I have here the default wood texture from my test game. I have chosen to use this to demonstrate a, uh, what would we call this? We're demonstrating a, a principle? Uh, basically, we can use textures from a texture pack. And then that texture... Oh, because I'm not viewing materials. There we go. That texture from the texture pack then will update to your meshes. So if you're using a different texture pack, you could keep wooden things still in line with what wooden things should look like in the game. Now, this does come with its own set of downfalls that we will cover... Um... I was going to say at length, but it's not really at length. It just has a set of downfalls that we'll cover. I already messed this up, so we're going to go ahead and re-unwrap. Uh, in this case, we actually do not want to constrain to image bounds because this is going to need to be larger than this image is. We're going to go ahead and use text tools here. Our image is actually a 16 pixel image. So we will go ahead and do that. And then UV layout set this to 16 as well and we will apply it's gonna make everything quite a bit larger uh, I am going to go ahead and just move a bunch of this stuff out of the way and now if you're thinking that stuff that's outside of the texture area here isn't going to be textured well as you can see it still is uh, what happens is it actually just repeats I don't know if there's a way that I can make the image in the background 
You can add a checker image. Okay, I definitely did not want to do that. That was absolutely a mistake. I just wanted it to... I thought maybe that would make the picture uh, do the thing. I don't know if there is an option to do that. There might be. And I just don't know about it. Okay, that's just for the UVs. Oh, maybe we would come in here. I could have sworn there was like a there was a tiling option somewhere. Oh, here is a, is it this repeat image? There we go. Okay, so in the tools menu, there is a repeat image option, and you can't. I don't know if this is gonna show through at all. There's a very thin line that shows the outline of the actual texture. So we can see that this leg has an end to the texture in this bottom piece. Um, also, that is not actually correct. And what I mean by that is it should be there because these are two pixels. So this should be two pixel square, not offset like that. I'm gonna actually turn that off though because it gets didn't much for me. What I'm gonna do here is tile these out like so. So now when we look at the legs, the texture on them shouldn't all be the exact same. This one's different, this one's different. They're both, well that's unfortunate. So let's go ahead and pull this one up to here. Also, why is that one different? Okay, we're having some issues here. These should all be the exact same. And they're not. Um, I want to say that it should be like this. Right? If we pulled off a 16th. Is this... Why does this constantly do this to me? It's showing the wrong... Yeah, I don't... Okay, there we go. Those are correct. All right, so now if you look at this side, that and that are the same, which is unfortunate. Okay, you could you could throw these wherever you want. It doesn't actually matter. So, if we want, let me go back to the island select. I could put it so they overlap like so. So there's a one pixel offset. Does that make it look better? It, it really is going to depend a lot on what your your base texture is that you're using. Um, then these pieces, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to go ahead and put them all there. And then these ones, I will put all here. Now, what I do like to do, okay, you'll see on here, and in this case, it doesn't matter quite so much because of what we're doing, but I do like to keep my tops my tops. So these are all the same the cut here is the bottom so this is actually the bottom so if i rotated this 180 degrees what we're looking at now i think would be right side up but it's actually still upside down because it's a cylinder a cylinder it's a box so you have one face that's upwards one face that's downwards uh, that's just the way it is and then this you know, we can make this align any way we want. I'm actually going to put it to the center as best as I can. Which I think two pixels, two pixels, two pixels, two pixels, like that. So this way, theoretically, if I were to place this wooden chair on top of a wooden block and then look at it from a top-down view, this would potentially match up exactly to the texture below it, um, depending on which way the chair is rotated in game, of course. Uh, you know, if it's this way, well, actually, it was better the original way. And if this was the floor texture, if it was this way and this was the floor texture, obviously it's different. But um, if it's this way and this is the floor texture, that's a perfect match. No way, it looks like it's mirrored. I don't know. It doesn't really matter for this example. 
We could also do the chair top as a different material, but that again, we will save it for another video. So here we go, we have this lovely chair. It's all UV unwrapped. We're using a texture from default game. You could be using a texture from anything. So we're going to go ahead and export out this OBJ. All right, so I saved myself the trouble of having to censor out a bunch of stuff by just collapsing the screens that had the, <laughs> the information that I don't want you to see. So again, I'm using the mind test preset that I have set up that I covered in a previous video. We are doing selection only with a scale of one. Material groups is checked, same stuff as normal. I'm gonna go ahead and call this lesson underscore two underscore uh, stool dot obj. And we're going to export that. All right, so I copied the assets, assets being the obj file that we just exported. And I'm going to go ahead and simply copy and paste because we're lazy like that. We're gonna call it bar underscore stool and description. How about we give it something very descriptive like bar stool genius, I know, right? We're gonna do lesson two underscore stool, which is what the file was named. Um, and then the tiles, we're just gonna do default wood.png. I believe that's what it's called. If it's not, uh, we're gonna have an issue. Um, because it's wood, we're gonna give it, oops, we're gonna give it the choppy. Um, I guess it really doesn't matter which. Our collision box uh, <laughs> is going to be very wrong. So we're gonna go ahead and call this, instead of collision box, we're gonna call this stool box because we're cool like that. And then we'll just copy this. 95% of coding is just copying and pasting already existing code. Um, that's, what a, that's what a wise man once said. The top, right now this will be just a full cube. This is the top, this is the bottom. We're gonna pull each of these in a quarter, which I think is gonna be too small, but we'll find out. Cool, let's launch a mind test and see how it looks. All right, world is loaded. Let's go ahead and look for our bar stool. Bada boom, bada bing, here she is. Place it in world, hey, that looks extremely wrong. I have a feeling I forgot to rename the local in the code. Um, so what, what do we need to do now? Well, we need to get a wooden block so we can see how well this actually matches. So we can see if my my genius plan has failed. We'll turn on free move. Um, I wanted to actually do that. Um, are we are we more or less centered above it? We're a little twisty. It's hard to say. With the shadows, it's um, a little more difficult. Do we need to be? Okay, I can't move in a small enough, precise enough increment, but more or less you get the point, I think. It matches. Huzzah, we can break it. All right, so we're back. I'm using a different texture pack. This is a 128 pixel hand painted by Drummy Fish, I believe is what it was called. And you will see here that the, uh, the bar stool now is is still correctly textured using the wood texture, which is a nice little feature if you're making something that you want to blend in with the source material it would be made from, you know? So like in the case of, of this stone here, it would make more sense to use the, uh, the default stone texture. Oh, <laughs> I'm holding it right here in my inventory. It would make more sense if this is supposed to be a stone to just use this stone texture as the material on it so it would match to the texture because as you change texture packs this may have somewhat matched to my test games default textures but it really doesn't match up to this at all the wood texture on here it would look completely out of place being at a 16 pixel resolution when this texture pack is 128. so that's an advantage to using a texture from a texture pack uh, that does come with the downside of course of <laughs> You can't do any kind of shading to it because then you're not using the the source material anymore. You could base it on that source material, but if someone changes the texture pack they're using, now you're completely not you know matching up the textures, which was the whole point of using the default textures.
that were provided by the game. All right, looking back at the code, I can see that indeed I forgot to rename this local to stoolbox, which would be why we were not using the updated text, or, uh, collision box. Back in mind test. Oh, did I mention we're using a different texture pack now? And again, you'll see that this still matches up. I did something very wrong with, uh, wow, very wrong. I don't know how I manage this, but uh, that is completely wrong. It should be a little bit wider, um, 1 16th wider to be exact. This must be a 32 pixel resolution texture pack. So we just need a small tweak there and we will be golden. Okay, so if I'm if I'm doing my math correctly, if we needed to go a sixteenth of an inch larger, we need to increase all of our quarters up to uh, I guess it'd be five sixteenths, right? So that'd be three point or sorry, it'd be point three one two five, and uh, this is our bottom, this is our top. I had that mixed up, so that should be correct now. We'll save it and we will check it out. Okay, I promise this is the last texture change. Uh, we're now using Pixel Perfection which looks like it's another 16 pixel resolution texture pack. Um, and we can see that the collision box is correct now and the selection box. If you wanted, you could do this as two different boxes, uh, maybe just for the selection box and have a small one, or I shouldn't say a small one, but one that's this size but comes up just to the bottom and then another one for the legs so that would actually match up a little more precisely if you wanted. Um, it doesn't really matter for the collision box. I would leave it as just this one because you can't you can't reach underneath this to collide with that separately. Uh, for the selection box, just for visual aid, visual reasons, maybe you'd want to change that. But yeah, there we go. We have a, a Vadinos wooden stool that could also be, um, you know, like a platform that we're storing things on. I must have creative turned on because I broke that really quickly. And that's uh, not tree trunk, but that's fine. So there we go. We have a nice wooden stool with default textures that we're using. So it always matches up to the texture pack. Nice little added bonus there. Um, yeah, that's going to wrap this one up. Next time, I think we will be looking at doing multiple materials on a mesh. So if you're interested in that, Stay tuned.